Douglas, Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birthright, and you're listening to Krypton Report. Tyler and welcome to Krypton Report, a podcast dedicated to all things Superman, Supergirl. We're going to look at the Supergirl TV series as well as the Krypton TV series, anything that has to do with the characters in their world. Comics, movies, TV shows, we will talk about everything and anything. We are part of the Southgate Media Group Podcasting Network. You can find us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, at Krypton Report. You can also email us at kryptonreportpod at gmail.com. If you get a chance to go over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, please leave us a review to help us get better. You can find me personal at JTY Patrick on Twitter and everything else. You can buy a Krypton Report t shirt at tpublic.com. Check it out. They have all sizes, colors, styles of shirts. Just go to tpublic.com and search Krypton Report and you'll see our logo. And every time you buy a shirt, it helps support other podcasts from southgatemedia.com. Thank you. Enjoy the show. Welcome to the Krypton Report. And James, it is good to be back. Um, This is an episode where we're kind of playing some catch up here. Um, Some of our episodes get recorded out of order um, because of timing and everything. It's a little peek behind the curtain for everybody. Um, for those of you who may not know, who don't follow the Facebook page or anything, um, I recently had a death in the family, and that kind of threw me off for a couple of weeks, and then I got a new job, and it's just been kind of getting back into things, and James and I have decided to take a week off and uh, just talk. We're just going to you know, talk Superman for a week straight, and uh, I think we'll be okay. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like a plan to me. And you're right, it is good to be back. It's been been a while since we've since we've chatted Superman and Supergirl and all things Kryptonian. Uh, so I have a whole huge list here of news. So we're gonna kind of jump in, and I'm just gonna kind of go through what I have, and then add a couple of things as we go. But here we go. So I guess Jared Leto's Joker is gonna get a solo movie. Okay. Rumor has it, yes. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to put too much thought in it. Just like with a lot of these other DC films, it's okay. You know, like, I liked his Joker. I I think it could be great. I feel like he didn't. We need either more Joker or less Joker in Suicide Squad, and it didn't uh, get enough time to really develop for such a radical different character. Um, so I, I'm curious about what the story would be where the Joker is kind of the hero. <laughs> uh, I, I, you can't put the Joker in a movie as the hero. Exactly. I, I mean, mean, like, I guess unless you're trying to adapt, uh, what was it? White Knight? Is that what it was that just came out? Yeah. Was that Batman? So, I mean, I guess, uh, that's what we do. So, I mean, I would, I would like to see because... I feel like Leto is a talented actor and was, and was carving out a character that people didn't know what to expect. And then he, all, like, we know that a bunch of his scenes were cut. So he didn't get a chance to really show what he could do. And I, I would like to see more of that. And we, I mean, that just kind of segues into we're still getting the quote unquote Joker origin film with Joaquin Phoenix. Okay. Uh, like I said, I'm I'm just I think the Joker works best. Like I've always been attracted to the Killing Joke, the story for the backstory of the Joker, and the fact that he creates this elaborate, great backstory only to basically say that it could have happened that way, and maybe it really didn't. Uh, so I'm curious about what you would do with the Joker. He he works better as like a mysterious character. He's one of those characters you want to know more about, but then when you try to know more about, sometimes it just loses something. Right. Um, you know, I think a, a Joker movie could be... Um, I think they could make it actually pretty trippy. Uh, him him being more of a... Uh, uh, having more of a different personality 
um, each day throughout the movie, the uh, psychoses that he has, um, you know, Jared Leto with what he was given, you know, I mean, his mannerisms, you know, tattoos, take them or leave them, but yeah. um, take them or leave them. I mean, it's just a radical uh, change on him. And uh, I mean, it didn't offend me any. So what, what, <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, there's a lot of interesting um, character bits about the Joker spread throughout his history. And, uh, you know, they've used a lot of them in different places. You know, they could really make an a interesting movie, something that you wouldn't expect because, you know, it's the Joker. He's unpredictable. Yep. I, so I don't think he could be the hero of a film, but, um, it would be, it would be a radical, uh, probably a radically violent film. It should be. All right. So staying in our, in our moody mode, we're going to kind of, I kind of got all my stuff kind of clustered here. Um, staying with more of the movie, uh, supposedly now the Batman is supposed to be a younger Batman, but still set in the DC extended movie universe. Um, so we got that. Yeah. With Ben Affleck, unlikely to down the cowl in it. So, yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I'm just, my take on the Batman or any of that right now is this. Whatever, and it's whatever until um, it starts filming. Well, you know, I mean, it's Batman, so, you know, it's it, it's in active development. Um, yeah, I mean. Which, what way they're going to go with it, who knows, but um, it's Batman, so, you know, you think that. It's it's in the works, however long it takes. Yeah, I mean, it's just one of those. I just am at the point now where I don't care like anymore because it's just been too much of oh, Affleck said he's not in it. Okay, like, and then Affleck wants to stay, and then he's not going to be in it again. He, so I, I don't really care until. I actually have concrete, like, up oh, cameras are rolling, and it's not big. That's See, well, that's the, the, yeah, that's the difference, though. Like, the Batman movie, I mean, we know the Batman movie is going to, is in active development, and what way it takes, what, what shape it takes is, is going to be interesting. But, um, like, the Joker movie, um, like, those are still kind of rumored, and especially the Jared Leto, that's just a rumor. Uh, you know, nothing confirmed. Obviously, they would want to explore it at some point, but, you know, it's all rumor. That's what the DCEU is beyond the three films that we know. The DCEU is filled with rumors. Rumors, rumors, rumors. Yep. It's interesting when you, when you hear them just keeping speculation alive. Yeah, it's... I don't know, it's, it's something, but, <laughs> all right, so keep moving on with that. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to, I'm reworking. So, Green Lantern core movie is going to be written by Jeff Johns, I guess produced by Jeff Johns, and supposed to star Hal and John Stewart. Okay, that's what I say. Buddy Cop movie they've been talking about. Um, we know Jeff Johns is good at writing the green lanterns he's been a long time doing it um hopefully he's able to adapt a good film story and give it room to grow but uh, yeah his his move from dc uh what was his title chief entertainment president something like that chief creative officer there it is chief creative officer um, yeah, now he's a writer and a producer for all, for the DC films. So I'm like, okay, once again, all right, Jeff Johns, you, I know you're an amazing writer. Bring it on, buddy. That's what I say. I'm ready. Yep. For it. And then let's see, we know we're going to get the Aquaman trailer at Comic-Con. Oh man. Um, 
which I, I guess it's one of those like I'm okay if they show like additional footage at Comic Con, but I hate when they just like tr- preview these trailers just at Comic Con, especially San Diego because it's become so huge now. Like you just, it's just you can't get there. Yeah. Well, we know the Aquaman is coming out. I mean, it's not just a Comic Con preview trailer specific. I mean, exactly. that'll be out and released online. Exactly. So that's why I'm like, okay. I mean, I remember when Wonder Woman dropped at Comic Con and it was online. And it was like, oh, sweet. And I feel like DC's going to have a very nice presence at San Diego. Mm-hmm. I think they've got a lot, a lot in store. And then that brings us to the Aquaman photos that were released for the Entertainment Weekly. And I'm actually holding the issue of Entertainment Weekly in my hand. Oh, excellent. Lucky you. So one thing I think is interesting, we'll point this out. We got a really cool photo of Arthur, a.k.a. Aquaman, staring down his brother, Orm, Ocean Master. And I think it's interesting... I, you know, at first I was like, man, Orm's supposed to have black hair. But then I thought, well, Orm in this sense kind of represents what a comic looking Arthur is. You know, you have Patrick Wilson when he's got blonde hair. That's what you could have, you know, if you look at the comics of Aquaman. But then you have Momoa as Arthur, and it's such a really awesome, cool take and interest of the character. So. We have a picture of Aquaman just being shot by water. But you know what my favorite picture is? What's that? It's the one where it looks like they're under the water, and it's um, Aquaman and Mira talking to who I believe is Volca, which is Willem Dafoe, and James Wan is right there directing. (laughs) <laughs> the Green Goblin. Yeah, the ship looks like it's already underwater. The set was designed to look like it was underwater. So, I mean, if the background already looks that way and then you add in some CG effects, I mean, they're underwater. Exactly. So I'm really excited for the underwater uh, effects for this film because it's just, I feel like it's something that haven't we haven't really seen, um, you know, the glory and majesty of what, Atlantis under the water could be. We have, yeah. We have a picture of Queen Atlanta giving baby uh, Arthur to her, his dad, which I'm not like thrilled that it's Nicole Kidman, but whatever. Her costume looks uh, looks really good, though. I will it's all shiny and blue. and I like I, what I find interesting though is that we get we get to see Black Manta, just him like we see the Manta helmet, and it's more flat. It doesn't have as much of the elongatedness that we're accustomed to seeing when it comes to Manta. And I'm kind of wondering if they're going to call him Black Manta all the time, or if it'll kind of get dropped and he'll just be Manta. I mean, either way, I'm all right with. I would assume that they would probably just call him Manta. I mean, they'll probably reference Black Manta at some point, but um, like as a just saying by name, I think I assume it would just be Manta. Call him out by Manta. Yeah, I agree. It, it just, just it, uh, I assume that's the way it would. I mean, that's how how they would probably address him. You know, I mean, call him Black Manta, but address him just as Manta. You know, get his attention nice and quick. And then we have a picture of Arthur and Mira on dry land, which looks like they're maybe investigating or hunting for something. Yep, a quest on the surface world. So, yeah, I mean, it it, it looks awesome. And I mean, I have no nothing. And then, you know, we have the the issue that I have has. Aquaman, Arthur on the cover with Mira in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. It looks right. Like- That's the one I would prefer, not the one with just a close up on on Momoa's wet face. Yeah, yeah, that, <laughs> I'll pass on that one. I like, I'm sure. I'm sure some people that's their preference, but you no, know, 
Not this guy. Not this guy. <laughs> no, me either. And then, so that segues into our next grouping of photos that we've got a whole bunch of now. And we know that they have officially started shooting Wonder Woman 2. And we just got our first look at Kristen Wiig as Barbara Jean Minerva in a very cool, kind of cool, like it's like her in a museum, and it's very a far off, distant shot. Um, well, there's one more um, photo. I'm not sure if it's an EW photo oh. or if it was uh, right. online. The um, yeah, I want to. I definitely want to talk about this one. Um, Jump back, my yeah, pulled. <laughs> no, no, uh, you like pulled straight out of the comics. Um, when Atlantis was was sunk, it split into seven kingdoms, and uh, they have statues of the seven kings uh, with their with their tridents and things up in the air, and it's like warring kingdoms. There's Orm's soldiers on great whites. And Orm is on like some kind of dinosaur, uh, a sea creature. And Alko is supposed to be on like a, uh, uh, a hammerhead shark. And then there's like, they call them sea dragons, like giant seahorses that they're riding into battle on the other side. It looks so awesome. It's so small. It's hard to see. But I mean, it's going to be so epic. Oh man. Like just the underwater world that they've, that they're creating. I mean, it's everything that you could pull from a comic book, everything you could imagine, uh, ancient Atlanti uh, Atlantis civilizations underwater. I mean, I can't, it's, it's a spectacle to be old and I can't wait to see what it looks like when the trailer finally hits next month. <sighs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Waiting with anticipation. Well, I mean, and it's for the entire film. It's not for Aquaman himself in particular. I mean, the visuals in this film are already shaping up to be one of a kind. Um, just epic. Yeah. And I mean, it, yeah. with the Seven Kingdoms and everything, you can go back to that good old photo that we had of the first Momoa Aquaman photo of Unite the Seven. Right. Unite the Seven Kingdoms of Atlantis. Exactly. Boom. We now know what it means. All, yeah, it's all connected, right? Exactly. So we got planets. It's cool. two years before be uh two years before Justice League came out. <laughs> Planting seeds for forever. Um. Now back to uh, what you were talking about, Minerva. This is the picture. Wonder Woman. <laughs> See now that's where you gotta cut in uh the Wonder Woman music. Wonder Woman. We got so we got the Barbara Jean Minerva picture. And it's cool, it's just a behind the scenes. This is her standing there. But it, it's just enough to be like, oh, we can kind of see the the dowdiness of the character. And then Yeah. Um let's see. I'm holding off on one pick. Oh, what the heck? The first one that Patty Jenkins tweeted out was of Steve Trevor. It was, Welcome to Wonder Woman 1984, Steve Trevor. And he's like in an 80s jogging suit. And I'm just like, okay, I'm cool. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to roll with it, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, there's things that come to mind like, okay, does this contradict anything that happened in Justice League? When she makes the comment about, I would have known a man who loved to fly it. And um, <laughs> yeah, I'm just... Uh, I got faith in it. I'm just gonna let it go. I'm happy to see Chris Pine back. Hey, we we love the first one. Um, it's uh, one of the. It's like the best DC movie. And um, I mean, they had they had great chemistry in the first one. Um, the whatever theory they they give us, I'm gonna run with it. Yeah, not going to make up my mind on the film from a handful of, you know, day one through three set photos. <laughs> what? What? You're not one of those people, James? <laughs> no, no. Nope. Every bit's going to get me more excited until I go see the film and then I'll decide then. 
and I'll make up my own opinion. Wow. How imagine that, right? How mature of you. How adult. <laughs> Um, and then we got a, we got a picture of Diana, like kind of just wearing eighties leisure clothes and it's all behind the scenes. And then we got some stunt photos, but we got a really good photo of her in the suit and it's still the same Wonder Woman costume. You know, they've mentioned it, it might be a little bit brighter. Um, they've mentioned she's going to have a new costume for this film. So I, I'm, I'm cool, you know? Hey, they nailed it. I mean, they don't have to change it, but if she wears something else into battle at one point, I'm it's, not gonna... it's all it's all marketing, man. As soon as they change yep. it, that's a new toy. It's a new image. They have yeah, and multiverse it, line, and it it also, I mean, it also brands the film like with that particular movie. You know, like, mm-hmm. that's kind of like one thing that kind of bummed me out with the Dark Knight Rises. Was it with the same suit? Like when the Dark Knight comes out, like we see him get a new suit, and then the Dark Knight yeah. Rises, um, you know, um, has the same suit, which is kind of funny because I mean, even with Aquaman, like the 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 one scene we see him quickly in BVS is you know Atlantean outfit, but he has no shirt or anything on, and then we see him like in Atlantean armor in Aquaman. I mean, in Justice League, and then the pictures we've seen so far. Of him in um, Aquaman, it's like a, it's a, you know, Atlantean armor. So I mean, it kind of helps establish what film you're in just by looking. Just like Batman's suit was different in Justice League, both of them were. Uh-oh. So I, I can kind of see why they, where they would go. Um, and so I mean, we got that. So that's all I have for the the DC films. Um, they announced, well, as we're recording this, they've announced that August is the release of the DC Universe. We're going to have Titans, and we already knew it's going to have, we knew the shows that it's going to have, Swamp Thing, Titans, Doom Patrol, um, the Harley Harley Quinn and adult animated TV show. The, yep, Young Justice season three. Oh, cannot wait! I know. And cannot we, wait. I'm so they haven't announced all the stuff it's gonna have when it launches. Um, we saw in the little sizzle trailer the Chris Reeve Superman movies. Was it Batman Returns? Oh, they had yeah, they had uh, Wonder they Woman had Burton, Batman. Yep. Wonder Woman 77, they said they'd have classic animation, like Batman the Animated Series. Uh, they had images of the Fleischer cartoons. Saw, so, yeah, the Constantine show. Uh, there was some of the animated features. I believe I saw Doom. I know I saw Crisis on Two Earths. Um, Public Enemies. I must say, uh, and uh, was it The Dark Knight Returns? I think. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yep. I did. Yep. I did read though that they're not going to have anything on there that's currently airing. Um, so like we're not going to see like any of the CW shows on there, which makes sense. I mean that's still kind of in, you know, that going on. So. Well, they have you know they have them on Netflix and they're available a week after. I mean, that's a, a pretty good, it's a pretty good deal they've got going for that for now. Yeah, so I mean, it's it's not gonna bother me, but you know, I, I'm I'm really c- curious about um, I'm the old Superboy show, and mm-hmm. they better put Young Justice on there so that I can rewatch season, you know. Oh, oh yeah, they need to bring one seasons one put seasons one through three on there because I I uh, you know I gotta catch up and cry. All I gotta say. And and the only the only thing that I have to say beyond um, all this digital streaming content, um, it'd be nice if you could get it uh, at some point uh, in physical media at home. Yeah, I mean, I'm a, I am very much. I mean, Netflix has released Daredevil and stuff on Disney. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm just I'm somebody that I like having my physical copy because. Our, when our internet was acting up the other night, um, 
you know what we did? We threw in a couple movies and stuff because we couldn't stream everything. So yeah. I'm just, I like having my physical copies to back up things. Call me weird. I don't care. <laughs> yep. Physical copies. Even if it's, even if it's something downloaded, um, to run off of thumb drive on a smart TV or something. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's still a physical media. I have, I have a piece of it in possession that I can watch it if, you know, the internet was down or what have you. I mean, people, um, crap, what was I going to say? I can't remember. Oh, they announced, I mean, they announced that supposedly Superboy, aka Connor, will be coming to Titans. And it's, oh. it looks like it's quite possible the, like the last episode or two of the Titans series that we're going to see Superboy if we do. Yeah. The description definitely re- references, um, Superboy. And, uh, um, I would be, I am excited at the prospect of having another super character, uh, in live action, especially, especially like Superboy in the capacity that, he really hasn't got anything going on. I mean, he was in one episode of Smallville, which was a nice little tease, but then that was it. Like it was a build up to nothing. Yep. They, they mentioned his name once or twice after that. And that was it. But, um, yeah, the only thing that Superboy has, uh, going for him is, um, uh, young justice. And, I hope I hope the live action show will, will do him justice, considering and um, and I'm I'm excited at the just at the prospect of another super character, and he could possibly even be, um, you know, more depowered. You know, he wouldn't have to fly. I mean, similar um, power set to his Young Justice character. Yeah, I was kind of thought more interesting. I always like the idea of a Connor Kent Superboy being kind of like how Superman was originally thought of when he was first created, you know, mm-hmm. couldn't fly, um, and everything. So that's kind of where my head's at, and I I would like to see that come to fruition. I've always I've stated I've I've never been a big fan of Clark Kent as Superboy, you know, as a child doing the heroics in the suit and everything. I always like Superboy being the clone or now his son and that way when he becomes superman there's more umph behind it Mm -hmm. you know i always think it's funny that they did superboy the tv series but he was an adult in college like he was still a man they just used superboy for copywriting and stuff right let's see um small things here on my list Um, well I, I mean, I have a trade of, of the Boy of Steel, of the Connor Kent version of um, Superboy. Um, so uh, that's that's a version of Superboy that I am familiar with and enjoy. So bring it on. I can't wait to see it. Bring it on, bring it on. Uh, well, uh, speaking of, you know, all this stuff in Titans, I believe earlier today I saw a photo with a caption saying final day or uh, filming wraps on Titans. Yep. And we got a picture of Robin. I was going uh, to, yeah, that. I was going to jump to that and let us talk about that for a quick second. We have uh, a well, picture. And you know what? I like it, but I don't like it. And I say that because it is, it looks extremely photoshopped. I would have preferred uh, more of a, a more open photo than, what it is. Yeah, I mean, it certainly looks like a like a promotional still for the for the show with the coloring and everything going on around it. Um, the costume itself, I think it looks kind of like a uh, mix between the Arkham games and the DCEU. Yep. The costume itself, it looks that way, and uh, it it still looks really good. <laughs> I mean, and I can't wait to see it in action. I go back and I always make the joke that when they first revealed like the Flash and Supergirl, like the first image of them in the costume, mm-hmm. they weren't really good photos. Like, say what you want, but if you go look that up right now, people, it's they weren't the greatest photos. 
Like even neither was Tyler Hecklin. Um, no. I mean, the best one was Supergirl, and the, yeah, the Tyler Hecklin Superman reveal photo. And I'm looking at it was kind of like, oh, like it looked like he just like walked in off like the street because he has like a five o'clock shadow looking thing going on. And they're like, oh, Tyler, hey, look at this quick photo. And he's like, what's it for? And they're like, I ah, don't worry about it, whatever. <laughs> and he looks all, he looks like thin. And, and like, then you see the behind the scenes photos of when he actually appears. And you're like, wow, like those came out the next day. And I was like, okay, now, now I'm seeing it. Like now, now I'm getting comfortable with the yeah. idea. Right. The behind the scenes photo actually looked better than the, the official image. <laughs> and that's why I'm saying, uh, I'm not, I'm not like, oh, I hate it. I'm just like, oh, it looks really good, but I'm really excited to see when we actually get a better shot of it. Right. Well, depending on when Titans is set to release, I mean, we know that, uh, I, figure, uh, I, it, um, I figure it'll be released when the streaming service is released because they are pushing the original content and mm-hmm. having that, that umph of, something you can only get on the streaming service immediately. Right. To- I wonder if it's going to be I wonder if it's going to be more episodic like uh, Hulu the way they release it. I guess. I've never actually watched a Hulu episode being released. Um, but uh, that's what I've heard. Or Netflix where it all drops at once. Yeah. I'm, I'm very curious about how that'll happen. Um, but you know m- my take is if they just release the DC streaming service and it's not really offering anything new when it launches, that could be bad. Mm-hmm. I, I have a lot of that stuff. Um, it's got, but having Titans there is something that you can only get from it. It's just gonna perpetuate it and sell it. Yeah. Well, if they just wrap filming today, I mean that's the wrap filming on the season finale. So if they do it episodically, I mean that gives them time. For for um, post production on the on the episode, yep. as well as you know, or I mean, even still, if they drop it in late August, I mean that's two months from now. It's it's not a, honestly, it's not a movie. You know what I mean? It doesn't have that budget, so I mean, they they are going to start doing uh, filming shows on the CW in July, and they're going to come out in August. So it's October. Uh, or yeah, that's what I meant. October, I said August. <laughs> yeah, Maybe I'm thinking getting my kids off to school again. <laughs> oh, those days are coming for me, man. Those days are coming. So, so now we jump to our favorite world. It comes. With, it comes with its own. It school comes with its own challenges as well with kids. So, um, so now we're. This is real quick. So. I, I guess Bendis, Brian Michael Bendis, is going to be bringing the nuclear man from Superman 4 into the comics. There was a sketch drawing of the nuclear man revealed, and I'm like, okay, doesn't bother me. I just think it's kind of funny that it's taken this long. <laughs> you know, <Yeah>. like... <laughs> well, um, the sketch looked awesome. It, it did. Um, it's funny that they're bringing nuclear man and yes, it is, it is funny. It is funnier still that it took this long. I mean, um, it just, I feel like, I feel like it was one of those characters that's just like, oh yeah, we could do this. There's, there's enough of people because I mean, it can be a fun, uh, you know, villain character for, uh, what do you call it for, you know, the comic book. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't like wanting to be like, oh, Nuclear Man's in Superman, the movie. I'm like, no, no. <laughs> like it, the concept was derived from from this film, even his even <laughs> his look. But, um, you know, coming from a movie, going into a book, I mean, you could imagine how many how many different ways they they would be able to expand on the character, you know, break him away from the uh the, the cheese that is quest for peace. Yeah, exactly. So, um, with that said, which I actually just bought my man of steel number three today. I'm going to buy four and five tomorrow. Yeah. We're going to do a whole, uh, wrap. Like we're going to wait till it's done. And then you and I are going to talk about it. 
just because we got yeah. behind and there's no point in trying to jump in and catch up. Oh, yeah. No, that sounds good. Just... We're going to do just a six-issue talk. Because I feel like sometimes in these, at least with the Man of Steel, uh, it's coming out. Uh, oh, with it coming, with it, yeah, with it coming out weekly, it's compared to something where I forget half of what I just saw going back into it. So, uh, so real quick, now we're gonna talk about Supergirl. And one thing about that's leaked is, as we record this, James and I have watched the end pilot, or not pilot, geez, we have watched the season finale. Um, and we're recording that episode later. So this one tidbit of news I'm going to kind of leave out because it kind of ties into that. But there are a few points that we can talk about. Uh, one we can talk about is that Wynn is stepping down as a series regular and will now be just a uh, recurring guest. And Brainiac will be a series regular on the show, so that's uh interesting. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm gonna miss Win. He's a really good character. Um, I think they, you know, they gave him some good things to to grow and develop his character. Um, you know, first season he was, I mean, he's he's always been a good character, but um, beyond the connection to his father being the toy man. Um, and his, his infatuation with Kara is he didn't have a whole lot of character growth and things to do. And, you know, the second season, besides helping create guardian and working at the DEO now, he didn't have much change there either. Yeah. That was kind of the thing like I, I had said before, um, was I felt like poor Wen got to a point where there was nothing left for him. And sometimes that happens is you just, you get a character and they out fulfill their purpose. And yeah, that would be a great episode. And, you know, you could not call it if, if it barely connected to the season, which would, would be doubtful. But even if it barely connected to the season, you could not call it a filler episode being a win focused episode showing the 31st century and some other uh, leaguers or legion members. I agree. <laughs> I completely agree. I'm, I am on board with you with that. So, and so Brainy's going to be around, which could be cool. Wind steps down. mon leaving the show. So uh, it was- I, I expect we won't see Brainy uh, in his blue form that often every now and again kind of like john yeah it's yeah i mean we they they established and showed us that they can do the modulation and all that so i'm okay with it yeah which was also a great character point uh for for win being intelligent enough to notice and recognize exactly what brainy is using technology that doesn't exist yet I feel, I feel like Brainy sometimes like rode wind hard that, you know, he said he was only a, like, I don't know. He said like a low level intellect. And I just feel like, eh, yeah, what, what do you call it? Like one point, yeah, what do you say? Like a 1.7 or something on. Yeah. <laughs> I and mean, he's a 12. Yeah. I, yeah. I feel like, I, yeah, I think Brainy knows that he has more potential and, and rode him because of it. So, yeah, I agree. I agree on that. And let's see. Yeah, that's it for Supergirl. Uh, because the other part is, and I think that wraps up my news. Yeah. Yeah, that's it for the news, man. Cool. All right, guys. Just you and me. I don't know why I'm saying that. I'm like hardcore. <laughs> I'm missing my son. <laughs> like he's staying, he's staying with my uh, sister-in-law. And it's just kind of weird. Oh. Like I came home from work and I'm like, Oh, where's my Solomon? And like, oh, he's staying with Terry. I'm like, man, like, I, I want to come home with my boy. Yep. Yeah. Parent, parent moments that'll happen when you're always used to them being around. Yeah, I, I didn't really pick up on it, but it's quiet there. <laughs> Does he? Dude, I. 
I have watched The Death of Superman. I'm going to watch it a third time. For all the people out there, just so you know, The Death of Superman was leaked online. I had a listener, a friend of mine, send it to me. I don't support piracy, and I'm still going to buy it. Oh, absolutely. I've already pre ordered it, but there, there was such a big deal in the fan community, and my friend sent it to me. I felt like I uh, owed it to him to watch it, and of course I have to share it with James. And yeah, we're still buying it. Oh, so don't. I, yeah, I thank you very much. And yes, buy, buy it. And buy that's, it. That's all we're gonna say right now because we're gonna have a huge, huge discussion when it officially releases, so that when we talk about it, all of our good listeners can listen to it as well, and they won't. Yes, know if they're getting. They will have seen it. They will have seen it. They will have enjoyed it. And I can't wait to talk about it. Yes, it's going to be amazing. And we will both have seen it countless times by then. Yeah, I about to say, there's no point in even trying to realize how many times I'll see it by the time we watch it. Um, well, Solomon loves Doomsday, so... Oh, I know. I told him, I said, you want to watch Doomsday movie? He goes, Doomsday movie! Oh, yeah. He's going to be, he's going to be asking you to watch it every day. He was like, Daddy, is that Doomsday? I was like, yep. He's like, what? And then he's like, when's Doomsday coming? And then he looks at me and he goes, is Doomsday here? Is that is that him in this? I'm like, yes, buddy. He's like, good. <laughs> crazy child of mine. Yeah. So good. So good. That's all I can keep saying for the time being. So good. I really enjoyed it. All right. That's going to be our news. All right. Do you want to talk about the finale, or do you want to talk about the summary of the episodes? Um, let's let's go ahead and let's go ahead and do the summary right. of the episodes. I'm right. Make my note here so I can edit later. Here we go. All right, Kryptonians, this is a weird kind of episode. James and I are kind of playing catch-up. Um, there's been some times, as I stated in a previous episode, um, my grandfather passed away, and Jania wanted to be on a couple episodes with me, so we had held off recording those because Jania was going to record them with me, and James and I recorded some others, but then just life happens and things change and time and all that fun jazz happens. So James and I decided we're going to have to go back and record those episodes that originally Jania was going to do, but it's not. So this episode is actually going to be kind of a, we're going to sum up and talk about a few episodes to just kind of get it out there so we can all be back on the same page. All right. So bear with us. We love y'all. We apologize. Um, but you know, here we go. So we're going to talk about Shelter from the Storm. And in this episode... Um, you know, we, we learned that Lena and Jimmy are together and the Legion is here to, they were sick with blight, which I thought was a kind of an interesting name for the, uh, for the uh, virus, just because blight is a villain from Batman Beyond. And that's the first thing I thought of when I heard blight. I was like, oh, so they're, yeah. I recall that, but. I also think Blight is from Justice League Dark and Forever Evil. Probably. Is. I have to. I'll have to look back and see and make sure that's true. But it sounds right. That was actually my first thought when when they had discussed the the virus and pestilence becoming Blight in the future. Yeah, I, I feel um, like they did stop that. The names are kind of neat, like pestilence. Um. I thought pestilence and rain were were fitting. Um, purity, I mean, it's a good name, but I don't think that name goes with a world killer. Yeah, like I feel like either I'm kind of like torn because part of me feels like pestilence and purity is kind of cool because you're doing these kind of alliterations with the P's and it's a little bit like heavy like pestilence, purity, and then rain just kind of like, oh, that's different. Or pestilence and rain and then purity sticks out, you know, like there's just mm -hmm. there's something not flowing. That's how, how I was feeling. 
Um, but we find out that Rain is found her weakness, and basically, the weakness is Ruby. She needs to get rid of Ruby uh, because Ruby makes Sam strong, and she can't afford for Sam to be strong. Yes. And so, you know, Alex is all freaking out, like, you know, wh- where is she? Where is she? And Lena's like, she's safe. She's safe. She's fine. And um, they're like, no, no, I need to go to her. And Alex decides that she's going to go to Ruby. Thus, by Alex going to Ruby, what happens? She puts Ruby in danger. And I just think that's kind of... Well, in a turn of events, I mean, you know, she used the phone. She went outside and allowed, uh, you know, allowed Rain to hear her. But, you know, in in... Just by chance, you know, she allowed it to happen. But you know, it's not it's not Alex's fault that she did. But um, and in this episode, as she's looking for Ruby, she goes to um, Sam's mother's house. Yes, she does. And what happens while she's at Sam's mother's house? Well, she's first confronted by Supergirl and Monel and. The lead, uh, and John, uh, but she ends up killing Sam's mother. Yes, she does. But she goes out, um, I'd say she goes out strong. She goes out trying to love her daughter, you know? Like, yes. And I gotta say, like, that's, that's strong stuff, you know? Um, it wasn't easy what happened. And, you know, rain kills her and, it's tough. I mean, but, yeah, I mean, it, uh, yeah, it's, it was, an, it's an emotional moment. I mean, you know, her, her daughter, in a sense, you know, even though we know it's kind of a separate end that rain is a separate entity. Um, but, uh, you know, basically her, her daughter kills her and that, that in turn, you know, puts stress on Supergirl. She didn't save somebody. But um, when she, this is this is the episode when she hears, um, when she hears Ruby and she goes to, it's Lex's mansion, isn't it? Yep, you took it. I was supposed to say. So Lena sent her to Lex's mansion to hide out, and this that was it's cloaked and <laughs> it's cloaked and it's got some interesting um, traps. Some some things we might have seen before, and you know something we didn't think about till right now. Ruby never got to meet Patricia, Rain's mom, or Sam's adoptive mom. She never got to meet her. That's sad. Oh no, yeah, that is sad. So I couldn't imagine. Yeah, I couldn't imagine kids, let alone grandkids. You know what I mean? Yeah, like it's tragic. Um. Let's see what else here. Going through my notes. Do you want to do the uh, or uh, did you want to bring up the the Superman reference when Rain gets to the mansion? Yeah, go ahead. Go. Oh, okay. Well, I was trying to let you have it there. Oh no, you got uh, it. <laughs> We're in this. Well, topic. it's all good. Yeah, when uh, when Rain go- goes to the mansion and she's trying to track down Ruby. Uh, she spins through the floor in a similar fashion that we've seen before. Um, Christopher Reeve. And then um, uh, uh, as she's walking through the basement, she comes up on some Lex Luthor traps. Simil- uh, the same traps for Christopher Reeve in the original Superman movie. Yep, they, they run her through the gauntlet. Mm-hmm. Which I thought was really uh, interesting. You know, I thought it was really interesting. It just, uh, it's interesting they chose to do it with that character, which is cool because it kind of catches us off guard. You know, because it's not the character that we would expect them to use. So, it works. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, big time it worked. It, it, nostalgia all out of this world. And yeah, it worked for, for the character, you know, kind of give give some spectacle to her coming after Ruby, and you know, we got we definitely got to talk about how uh, Supergirl ends up saving Ruby in this one. 
because she's she's weakened and they're getting beaten by rain because she has the power of three world killers. But they she uses the strategy she gets from um, uh, Jean's father, Marin, uh, appealing to um, appealing to her uh, rain's nature, rain's um, uh, mission. And and Ruby is an innocent, innocent life. And Rain couldn't take an innocent life. Which is so instead of extremely smart. Yeah. So instead of actually like in a physical fight where Rain is taking down Alex and her and her super suit that Wynn made her and um, Monel and and Supergirl, you know, they appeal to her with words to her code. And actually save Ruby that way. Uh, you know, the lesson that uh, Marin used to survive the White Martians uh, uh, back on Mars. Which was a nice scene, too, when uh, John uh, transformed into a White Martian to uh, to to bring out the, the memory and and the, the thoughts that Marin had because of his debilitating disease is Martian Alzheimer's. Their scenes get me, man. Like, every time that they're on screen together, like, the father-son, it, it gets me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they are very good. I could watch a whole show about them. But, you know, so in this episode, the, the, the Legionnaires are there to stop pestilence they did that rain uh like you said has the power of three world killers so that just really sucks for supergirl they try to they try to appeal to sam which i get the the idea of appealing to reason like sam but at the same time just I, yeah i mean it was that's why it was so smart the way that they did it you know appealing to rain's code couldn't get through to Sam, but they, you know, they figured out how to stop Rain from, you know, doing something that she shouldn't be doing, putting her back on mission, so to speak. It is, you know, what it is. Yeah, good episode. Good episode. It is a very good episode. So, moving on, the next episode um, is. Dun, dun, dun. Season 3, episode 19, The Fanatical. Which should have just been called the episode entitled Guardian Does Something. That's <laughs> so what it should have been called. Because it really was a Guardian episode. And I'm okay with that. Because, you know, this whole season we've said things like, where is, you know, where, where is Guardian? Where, where is... Like that. Jimmy just kind of abandoned that after all that... Uh, I'm guardian. I need to be guardian. 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 You know? <laughs> yeah, the- trying to force guardian down and then he disappears. And then all of a sudden it's just like, uh, yeah, I can do something about that. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, the only two things they gave him for a while there was being a, a boyfriend to Lena, um, you know, barely a friend to Kara sometimes. Um, I mean, he's always a friend to her, not like he treated her um, shady or anything, but, uh, you know, um, just, they didn't have too much interactions. He was always with Lena. And then, you know, he was, he had his really good scenes with Wynn as, uh, his friend, his buddy throughout the season. But that's all that, that's all he's had to do the entire season. Yeah. I mean, it's really weird when you think about it because him and Wynn have had more time and everything together than, car and he had so it's just it's back to what we're talking about well car has got the rounds well you know car has got the rounds to make i mean she's the lead so <laughs> somebody's gonna fall off somebody's gonna fall short somewhere right yeah so it was a good episode um yeah the uh, some of colville's cult followers are um uh, 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 they had a journal stolen from them by somebody who didn't believe the same, uh, the same teachings and 
and that Supergirl was lost, that she wasn't the Messiah that they had talked about before. And they're about the world killers now. They praise the world killers. Yeah, talk about jumping shit. I mean, <laughs> right? I, I, uh, Supergirl's not our savior. Let's go to the one who's killing everything. And I, I just well, I mean, she and, is. It is. It is her code or mission, you know, to kind of bring peace. But it is kind of by any means necessary. Uh, this is the one where Jimmy wrestles with the idea of revealing himself as Guardian. Um, yeah, taking the mask off, um, you know, and letting everyone see him and what. They yeah, know. right. Well, his followers, you know, what are they? They shoot him in the head and knock his mask off so they see who he is, and they have video proof or something. They're they're going to release um, threatening his identity as Guardian um, to return the the woman who stole the journal. I can't re- I can't remember her name now. And it's just, it's a, just, a, it's a really good Jimmy episode. Yeah. And, um, I think, isn't this the episode where he talks about, uh, um, the, the racial profiling on him as a child? Yep. Um, was really, a very, yeah, really, very strong. impactful scene. Yeah. Really strong scene. You know, I mean, this show, Supergirl has always been the outlier in, in the, um, DCCW shows where they were able to tackle some other um, um, so, political and, and yeah, different different subject matters, uh, more sensitive subject matters. And this is where, you know, that lied, you know, definitely until Black Lightning came out. That's, that's 100% in your face, you know, but this one has dealt with many different ones and it was really nice to see um, that strong scene come from Jimmy. It was. And I, it just, I know it was a great, it was a great scene. And I feel like, you know, our listeners might not know this. I'm not black. You know, I mean, <laughs> you know, and it's, it's something I've never had to deal with, but in that scene, the way he's talking about, it, he sells it. I feel like I'm there. Like I understand what he's talking about, you know? as much as I can. Yeah. Well, he, I mean, he very, he very easily could have, have had to deal with something like that in his life. You know, I mean, he could be drawing on personal experience at that point. I mean, we all, you know, uh, it, it's sad that it exists and we all know that it exists. And, you know, sometimes it's, it's out of control. And, but, uh, very, yeah, very powerful scene, emotional, strong, uh, it was it was a, a highlight um, for characters in this episode, and, and in that episode, you know, we they they get the book that's setting up the the world killers, and they're getting them ready to introduce us to some characters that we're going to talk about now in Dark Side of the Moon, which is episode twenty in our last of our oh, summary episodes. Oh. Well, we gotta uh we gotta mention what happens here in Fanatical just to get to that because they uh through the, the journal, through the book, they they get the what is it called? The Huron L. Yep, I was Huron L stone. I was getting there okay. we'll talk about it one um throwing back to how it connects. Which why did they name it uh, Her and L? Like really? You had to use L at the end? Seriously? Like Yeah. L. I thought that was interesting. Like, yeah, they could have definitely named it something else. I don't know why they had to name it, had, give it kind of a, a surname or something. But, uh, I mean, in Fanatical, the one cult follower is using the stone, um, to try to channel world killer powers, uh, into herself. And Kara can't touch the stone there, but Monel helps her to remove it from the, from the chick's hand. And it, it it's very interesting what that stone becomes. Yeah. But they understand what it's probably something with Lena, right? And then they understand that they have to get more of that stone and they track some of it. And that's where we get into Dark Side of the Moon, correct? 
Yep. They found a, they used the properties with Lena and they found an asteroid that is, has it. And they, they follow that asteroid and that asteroid leads them to Argo City. And we get to see my favorite Lois Lane. That is called Mom. Mine as well. No offense to any other Lois Lane. She's just the one that got me. And this episode takes place predominantly in Argo City, where Kara is reunited with her mom and she's happy and she's excited. And Monel, this, I really like Monel this season. And this episode is a prime example of what I like about his character is he finds a sick boy and he uses like Legion technology he had on him so that the boy would be healed. And, you know, we get, we get a name drop of Zorel and we find out that the car talks to her mom and she talks to her and finds out the hair and L is actually the life force of Argo city. It is a substance that is powering Argo city. And they have to go to before the council to plead their case to be able to get a piece of it. And one of the members of that council on Argo City looked kind of familiar, don't you think, James? Uh, that she does. And there's a reason. And what might that reason be? Uh, she is one of the one of the witches who sent off the world killers. She's one of the she's the hologram woman that Rain talks to inside the Fortress of Sanctuary. Exactly. And I was like, oh, my God, this was an amazing twist because I don't know about like with you. But like for me, uh, I thought like all the, the holograms were, you know, people long and gone. Like I didn't see them as someone who might still be alive. You know, I took it as this is. Yeah, they were they were on the planet uh, across the mountain range, launching off the ship at the same time as Jor- uh, Jor-El and Zor-El, and you know, assume they died with the planet because I mean, that's supposed to, that's that's um, most of the time uh, at the last moments of the planet's life when the ships are sent off world. Exactly. So. And that was an awesome twist. That I didn't see coming. And that made me happy. Well, in this episode, they've got, uh, they've got Rain locked up. Uh, Lena has Rain locked up in the same cell that she had, um, Sam when she was doing the tests on her. And this time it is officially like just Rain and Sam, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she, they're still connected at this point. It's getting late, people. We apologize. I have, and we're, and we're 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 doing some of this off of memory. And, and I am looking at my notes, and I can't read it. We just wanted to get you guys the show because we feel bad, and we want you guys to hear some of our other awesome thoughts that we have because we're pretty, you know. Well, talk about the Monel thing. You know, the the cure that he gave the kid. He told he gave it to the mother and told her that they could use it there to treat other people's illnesses as well. So he didn't just help one person. He gave them something that that has multi, multiple uses. and can help numerous people with numerous uh, um, ailments. And that is something that I want, I would like to have seen more of, you know? Mm-hmm. So I'm glad when they returned to Argo, um, you know, just as a forward thing here, the, you know, I'm glad when they return to Argo that they actually run into those people again. They bring the kid back, the, the mother back, you know, uh, it's not just a one and done thing. You know, the kid is happy and he gets to play and do all kinds of stuff now. Exactly. As it should be. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's really interesting. You know, they, they appeal to the council to get a part of, to get a piece of the stone. And, um, you know, the, the council is split and the one person, uh, the one person who's left to decide the fate, if they get a piece of the stone or not is, um, her name was Selena, correct? Yeah. Um, 
one of the witches, one of the world killer um, witches, and she she actually grants them some of the stones because obviously she obviously has a plan for Earth and for the world killers. Um, so, you know, she's she's able to to help and, and move forward with her plan uh, in her own in her own designs. Didn't it just make you kind of like feel a little odd and like creepy and uncomfortable because you weren't sure what she was doing? Yeah. Well, what was interesting, I wasn't sure, was when she was doing like her prayer there at the end after they're on their way back to Earth with the stone. She does her prayer, and at the same time, I mean, it's like galaxy away or something, uh, however far they said. Uh, but she does her prayer, and then kind of rain kind of snaps out of it or whatever, and she breaks free of the cage just as Monel and Supergirl arrive, and it's the very end of the episode. So how could her... How could her prayer kind of, I mean, did it trigger something or was it just kind of like a coincidence thing? Sure exactly. It, it, it was very uh, coincidental. But, I mean, that, that wraps up episodes, you know, the, the episodes we were catching up on. And we want to thank everybody for just kind of bearing with us as we move forward and enjoy Supergirl. Any final thoughts, James? It's getting late and... I know you you hit the gym. You're a buff man and probably need some rest. <laughs> yep, I actually have to take a quick shower before bed. And yep, I got work in the morning. Never enough hours in the day. No, they're not. And with my schedule the like it is, I, I haven't got used to it yet. And I get home and I feel like it's earlier than what it is. So, all right, fellow Kryptonians, you heard it here from James and Tyler. You can find us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at Krypton Report. You can also email us at kryptonreportpod at gmail.com. If you get a chance to go over to iTunes, please leave us a review to help us get better. If you're an Amazon shopper, just remember you can go to southgatemediagroup.com. There's a portal log into Amazon, and you'll shop into your account just regular, but it also helps keep all the podcasts on and helps keep Southgate running. Remember, look up in the sky.